Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. It is a beautiful January day here in Johnson City and I'm here with Gabby Smith with the Com- Community Coalition Against Human Trafficking. So it's going to be a little more serious episode this morning. We're going to talk about some stuff that... Um, it's just not fun at times, for sure, and um, how to maybe we can bring awareness to that in our area. And um, unfortunately, it is a, an issue in our area. And how do we um, help? So, welcome to the podcast, Gabby. Thank you. And Thank you're you. a Johnson City native, right? I am. But weren't you were not born here? I was not. So I was born in São Paulo, Brazil. I moved here when I was eight years old. That's a little past Irwin, right? <laughs> well, yeah, just a little just bit. Just a little bit down the road. Just a little bit uh, further south. Um, How did you make it from Brazil to Johnson City? So my mom was a flight attendant, mm-hmm. and she met my stepdad, who was from here. Okay. Um, and they got married, and we moved We moved up here with him. And you were eight? I was eight years old. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Where did you grow up in Johnson City? What part? So I grew up in Gray. Yes. I went to Gray Elementary. I went to Daniel Boone High School. Nice. And then I went to ETSU for college. Good so for I just you. have never left. <laughs> Why leave? Why leave? Perfect, right? It is the best. <laughs> What'd you get your degree in at ETSU? I got my bachelor's in psychology and I got a master's degree in criminal justice and criminology. Ah, did you ever interact with Mickey Braswell? Braswell. That that name sounds familiar, but I don't think so personally. He was in criminal justice and he was like my Second dad growing up, people okay, from school. Okay. Just a super good dude. Super good dude. So, Town City Living, what's your favorite thing about living here? Uh, there's so much. So, I live um, off of Knob Creek Road, kind of in the heart of Johnson City. Mm-hmm. It's close to everything. You know, like when I was. Town Acres area? Town, yeah, right behind um, Liberty Bell. Oh, yeah. I know I know you are. Yes. Yeah. And uh, when I was in grad school, my husband and I talked a lot about moving away, looking to move in somewhere like Colorado where there's a lot more. I don't know, just we had this dream of like, let's go to somewhere bigger and better. And um, I got the job that I had previously here in downtown John City and we bought a house and we were like, you know what? This is just the best place. Like there's no there's no reason to move. We love it here. We're really glad we stayed. Yeah. So we can always go visit other places. Exactly. Yeah. Come back to the best place ever. Yes. Yeah. What do you and uh, your husband, John, like to do for fun here in Johnson City? Gosh, I mean, we live so close to downtown. You know, there's so many great restaurants popping up everywhere. Mm. Um, We've got three dogs, so we take them down to the Tweet City Trail quite a bit or walk them around Founders. Um, Yeah, there's just some – I feel like every weekend now there's something new to do here in downtown Johnson City. So That's awesome. Yeah, Yeah, we – I see tons of dogs and people walking them down in Founders and Tweetsie Trail. And we just got a great area for parks and dogs and all that fun stuff. Okay. So that's the good stuff. Let's talk about human trafficking. How did you get involved in being a, I guess, um, starting the coalition against it? Sure. So I, right out of graduate school, I got a job at the Family Justice Center here in Mm -hmm. downtown John City which is another great resource for victim services. Um, They provide services for victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. And when I worked there, I had some interactions with the coalition. Um, Natalie Ivey was the director at the time, and she'd come and done a training with us. A couple months later, they were hiring for a position here in the Tri-Cities area. So the coalition services a really big service area. They're based out of Knoxville, okay. um, but we do cover all 33 counties of East Tennessee. So they were looking for somebody to be a little further east. Do you have somebody um, in every county? or We don't. Um, right now, it's just we have our home base in Knoxville, okay. and then there's two of us here in the Tri-Cities gotcha. area, okay. which is, you know, it's a big service range for us. Uh, I always of, say a my— A lot of territory. Yes, my— um, my other office is my car, gotcha. you know, so, um, but yeah, we, they were hiring. I applied, I got in. Um, thankfully my people over at the family just center just loved me so much that they did, they said, you can have the spare office. So I stayed in the building. Of course you goodness. did. Yes. That's awesome. Um, but I've been with the coalition since, um, summer of 2020 now. So okay. it's been about two years, two and a half years. So I guess maybe for listeners who don't know, tell mm-hmm. us what human trafficking actually is. Sure. So, um, human trafficking basically is the business of stealing freedom for profit, right? So, um, the technical term for, or I guess the technical 
technical definition for human trafficking is the use of force, fraud, or coercion to make somebody engage in a commercial sex act or a labor um, act or work act. Um, basically, it's just one person taking advantage of another person to make a profit. Yeah. Um, Greed and, at its core. Right, right. Um, you know, and it manifests in a couple of different ways. Um, and honestly, from... From here in Johnson City to Knoxville and everything in between, it just looks different depending on the area. Gotcha. So, you know, we hear a lot in the media and movies and stuff we see on, like, Facebook. Um, oh, be careful in the Kroger parking lot. Somebody was following me around and stuff. That stuff, not to say it doesn't happen. Absolutely it does. Right. That's just not what we're seeing when we're working with trafficking victims. Gotcha. What we're seeing is individuals who have a vulnerability that's easy to take advantage of, of um, being taken advantage of by somebody that they know or that they've built some kind of relationship with. Now, in the more rural parts of our state, um, you know, uh, further in Carter County or in the rural parts of Washington County, Sullivan County, um, we see a lot of familial trafficking, which is exactly what it sounds like. A family member acts as a trafficker. And there's been some studies done on this, um, but we we see everything that's been done in these studies, we see in the work that we do, which is the number one motivator for that, um, for familial trafficking, is drug-related, unfortunately. Um, intimate partner trafficking, we see that as well um, with gang relations, stuff like that, but it does look a little bit different. So familial, you're saying that, like, family members would sell their children or siblings or whatever yep. and or drugs or yep. for, for drugs or for money. Um, and in that study, they actually found that the most common trafficker was mom. Mm. Um, and like I said, it, that kind of lines up with what we see in the work that we do. A lot of the kids that we work with um, who are taken out of the home, thankfully, you know, DCS does a good job of responding to that. Um, but most of the time in those cases, mom was the trafficker. And tell me about like, God, it just makes me sick, but mm -hmm. like mom sells daughter. Where, what happens to daughter? Where, and how do you guys sure. find out and mm -hmm. help her? And I yeah. mean, like just, yeah. So I'll give you, um, an example of a case I worked when I first started working with youth. Um, I had a 14 year old girl who was referred to our agency, not because we knew she had been trafficked, but because she had some what we call at-risk factors. So she had a history of running away, um, hanging out with some older people, things like that. So we kind of had suspicions, but she got referred to us just to do a prevention curriculum. So as I'm working with her and I'm talking with her about what trafficking means, she says, oh, that sounds a lot like what happened to me. Like, okay, tell me about it. So <clears throat> there was a time where she had run away from her father's home and stayed with her mom, who did not have custody of her for very apparent reasons. Um, and mom said, hey, I've got this really good buddy. You're going you're gonna to love him. You know, just you'll stay with him for a week. Um, and so my kid went and stayed with this quote unquote friend of the mom. Um, you know, he obviously took advantage of this 14 year old girl. Um, she's, she asked him one night, how do you know my mom? And he said, oh, I don't know her very well. I've only met her like twice. And she said, oh, okay, well, I think it's time for me to leave. Went back home with mom. Um, they got into an altercation. Law enforcement was called, DC, you know, they ran her name, found out she was missing from child welfare, you know, from DCS custody. Um, so she got taken to a facility, all of that. But, um, after all of that happened and her and I were kind of processing what happened, I just asked her, hey, so, you know, your mom had you stay with this friend. Do you know why? And she said, oh, my mom was getting pills. My mom was getting pills in exchange for me, you know, spending the week with this guy. And that's what trafficking looks like. Yeah. You know, that's the reality that is really, really ugly and people don't want to think exists. But that's that's what we're seeing. Mm, that just breaks my heart. Um, it's crazy the drive or the need for those pills or that, mm -hmm. you know, to solve that addiction that, mm -hmm. I mean, you would even give up your dog. It's just yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, so what are you seeing some, I mean, and you also mentioned labor too. So mm -hmm. a lot of immigrant labor stuff or yeah. how does that work? Yeah. You know, um, we don't see it as often, um, but I have worked a few cases. What we see a lot is yes, either individuals coming and looking for work they're very easy to take advantage of. 
um, you know, they're promised this job and it's not that at all. And then they're threatened with, you know, immigration if they tell or if they try to leave. Um, we also see with young boys um, who kind of start in the drug trade and then decide they don't want to do it anymore, but now they're not allowed to leave that. Right. And we consider that labor trafficking as well. Sure. So we, we work with a lot of young boys who go through that as well. So do you guys relocate people and help with that kind of thing to help protect yeah. them? Right? So when it comes to youth, that's kind of all on DCS, but we're, we're there to support them the best gotcha. way we can. Okay. When it comes to our adult clients, yes, we have a shelter that is in Knoxville. We also work with local shelters um, here in the Tri-Cities. And we have a um, transitional living program in Knoxville. Okay. Um, a big part of what we do as well, especially for people who are trying to get out of this area or even the state, we work with Polaris Project to relocate individuals. So we've gone as far as like Colorado or New Mexico to take our clients to a program that's more appropriate for them. That's cool. Yeah. Um, that's got to be just a very hard job. How do you feel like the Lord created you to handle this? Because like my heart would yeah. break every day. Yeah. And it probably does. Yours I'm sure does too. Yeah. You know, I, th I, we always celebrate the wins mm -hmm. at our agency, even if it's like the littlest thing. Sure. My kid goes to session without crying. Um, my kid went to school for a week straight. I have an adult who got, you know, temporary or unsupervised visitation with their child now, you know, things like that. We just try to celebrate every little win mm -hmm. um, because those, those make every hardship worth it. What do you feel like are some of the um, ways that maybe legally or, mm -hmm. you know, we can put an end to it? Or right. Like just making the, mm -hmm. I guess, the consequences so severe that yeah. you even think about doing it? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah. So that's a good question. Um, there's been a lot of changes in laws in the past couple of years um, of how we deal with not only the victims, but also the offenders. Mm -hmm. So Tennessee is actually um, the number one state in the country for human trafficking response. I know we're not not great at everything, but this is one thing we, we kick butt at. That's so good. Um, we work very closely with Tennessee. TBI. Yeah, go Tennessee. We work very closely with uh, the TBI and their human trafficking task force, um, as well as local law enforcement. They have a task force that meets with local law enforcement every three months or so just to kind of talk about what's going on. Here's some tips we got in. How can we address this? They set up stings often. Um, I mean, they stay on top of things. Um, but just as a general member in the community, I'd say the most important thing that you can do is get educated. Yeah. Take a training. Learn about what's going on in your area, what to look for. Um, you know, we we as a, the coalition and, you know, a lot of agencies have trainings, but um, we try to make our specialized to different professions. So we have ones for um, teachers, we have ones for medical professionals, realtors, we have yeah, one for just about anything you can think of. We've made a training that um, is being used over at the casino that just opened in Bristol spe that's specific for casino staff and hotel staff. So, um, yeah, number number one thing is to get educated. Yeah, um, that's cool. How do you, how does somebody connect with you, or where, where would be a good site for somebody to go to to connect with you to get that or get on board with the training and figure out when to go and how to do that. Sure. So um, you can find us at growfreetn.org. Um, you can email info at ccaht.org. Um, you can follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, Community Coalition Against Human Trafficking. Okay. Any way you message us, we'll, the, the message will get <laughs> to, the, to the right person. But yeah, we offer those trainings all the time. We can book them individually for um, different agencies, and they're free. All of our, we're a nonprofit agency, so all of our services are completely free. That's cool. How do you guys get funding? Um, so it's a little bit of a lot of different things. So we apply for grants, obviously state grants, federal grants. Um, we've got a couple of donors in the Knoxville region that help us out. We do fundraising. We do one big um Halloween party called oh, cool. Unmasked. Nice. Um, that is in Knoxville. I'm hoping that in the next year we'll have something do fun. Yeah, in Johnson cool. City. Yeah. So, but to do that, we need a, a big donor. So, if anybody wants to help the cause, come on, holler at your girl. Gabby <laughs> needs some cash. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little mix of everything, but we get a lot of help from our community. So yeah, that's nice. cool. Okay, so 
Tell us about our area. You said TBI is really on top of it. Mm -hmm. However, I hear that we're a, kind of a hot spot for it. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that true or is that just like a rumor? Or tell me about like our area and human trafficking. And yeah, so I guess in comparison to the rest of the, the, mm -hmm. the nation, too. Um, I don't think it's happening here any more than it's happening in other places. Um, I think it's such an underground crime that, you know, like I said, our numbers keep going up mm -hmm. every year. And, and I don't necessarily think that it's because it's happening more and more. I think people are just getting more educated. Yeah. Um, and they're, and they're being able to get these victims to help, you know, it's bringing it to the light. Right. Um, we, you know, in the, in the more, um, I guess, urban parts of our state where they're, there's a lot more agencies to help and catch these things that are happening. In the more rural parts, you know, there's not as many service agencies that are filtering yeah. these people out and yeah. getting them the specific help that they need. Um, so I, I really don't think there's a difference between, you know, how often it's happening in Hawkins County versus Washington County. Okay. I think it's it's happening just the same in both places. It's just a matter of are we catching it or not. Yeah. What do you see as some measures that, I guess we can put in place in our area to kind of shut it down. There's, do you even think mm -hmm. that's like an, a, a possibility? Do you feel like we can end it or is it just a. I would like to say yes. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, everything that we do is for that goal to right. make my job irrelevant. You right. know, I'd like to never have to do this again. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, human trafficking is the second biggest um, illegal trade industry in our country, right behind drug trafficking. Um, you know, there's a there's a a low risk and a high reward when it comes to trafficking individuals. You know, it's a lot easier to to move a person than it is to move drugs or guns or something like that. And you can sell that same person over and over again. Whereas with drugs, after you're done with your stock, you got to stock up some more. So, um, you know, I've I don't know if there's anything necessarily that will just eradicate it completely. I think it's just going to be a continuous uphill battle. Um, but yeah, just knowing how to get help, you know, um, working with law enforcement and we just keep keeping our eyes on things. Um, eventually, I don't know, maybe one day in the <laughs> far, far future, it won't be a problem anymore. Yeah. That's my one next question would be like, what if somebody is stuck in that mm -hmm. or somehow listening to this podcast, that would mm -hmm. be a God thing for sure. But yeah. Um, what would you you know tell them to do? Yeah, so if you're the individual who's experienced trafficking, um, you can call our hotline. Um, you can call the human trafficking hotline. Um, they'll probably just direct you over to us. Um, you can call law enforcement and say, hey, get me in contact with this agency, whatever would be easier for you. Um, we also you know have our, our brick and mortar building here in downtown John City, the Family Justice Center. Um, you can go there for... All kinds of services, but human trafficking services is one thing they serve. Yeah, they I mean, I would think you could call are. the police and be like, come help me. Like, yeah. I, just, I need to get out yeah. of here. You know, like, mm -hmm. it seems so awful. Yeah. Human trafficking is a tricky crime, too. Um, and a lot of the, the victims that we work with, sometimes they don't see themselves as a victim. Right. You know, they, they have this, what we call a trauma bond with their trafficker. They think that that's the person who's helping them, you know, who's giving them the things they need and a place to live. And in reality, they're just taking advantage of those vulnerabilities they have. So it's hard to work with. It's very hard to work with. Yeah. Yep. I think you'd have to be an extremely patient and understanding person. I, My husband might say that's not right, but <laughs> <laughs> I am so very patient. <laughs> I understand. Yes. Gosh. Whew. Um, how can the community help you? How can we get behind this and and step mm -hmm. in and help you besides helping get uh, an unmasked yeah okay party going. yes um like i said biggest thing get educated yeah know about um what the response protocols Is that mandatory training for like all the teachers i would think like all the teachers would have to have that it's not okay. it's not a mandatory training we've done a lot of training with um like counselors and um nurses and stuff in the johnson city school system um, we've done trainings with, uh, the topper Academy, the alternative school, things like that, but it's not a mandatory training. Okay. I wish it was. So maybe helping get that into. Yeah. Yeah. Getting us into schools. That's a big thing. It's very hard. It's a very sensitive topic. Mm -hmm. Um, we actually have intervention curriculum for, for kiddos that we can do. 
Um, and again, it's a sensitive topic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of hard to pitch that to a school. Right. Um, but it is something that needs to be talked about with young people. Yeah. So that absolutely, um, just spreading the word that we exist. You yeah. know, if you if you work in the in the helping professions, if you are a counselor, if you are um, a teacher, if you if you work one on one with individuals who have vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. then. Know, know what to do, know what to respond. And that's a lot of what we talk about in the training that we do. You know, we talk about things to look for, of course, indicators, things like that. But we kind of equip you with, okay, if in your profession, if this is what you're seeing, here's what you need to do. Here's your next step. Because okay. um, identifying it is just, you know, it doesn't help much. you got to act. So, um, Would you want to share some of the indicators for people listening maybe just so sure. in case they're in the... Yeah, so for our kiddos, for our youth clients, um, big things that we look for is um, runaway behavior. So, you know, if you are if you think about it, you're 14, 15 years old, you're on the run from DCS, um, you're more than likely not going to have a place to stay, you're not going to have a car to drive, you're not going to have a job to, you know, supply you with the things you need. You become a very easy target. Sure. So runaway behavior is a big one. Substance abuse, unfortunately, is a big one. That's for adults and kids. Um, you know, any any anybody with a vulnerability really can be exploited. Yeah. So, um, you know, we I guess it depends on what world you're in. If you're a medical professional and someone's coming in for, um, you know, SCD checks often, that's mm -hmm. probably a red flag. Um, if you're a teacher and the kid hasn't been to school in you know, three months, that's probably a red flag, you yeah, know, so sure. it just depends what world you're in. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And the thing about the indicators when it comes to human trafficking is that on the surface, they might be a million things, right? So right. one of the things we have on our indicators list is like bruises, you know, visible bruises or something like that. Well, that could be an indicator for I fell and hurt myself. Right. That could be an indicator for I'm experiencing domestic violence or physical yeah. abuse in the home. That doesn't necessarily you know, have to be an indicator for human trafficking. Right. But if you ask that person, hey, what happened to you? Where did this bruise come from? And they tell you, well, I didn't meet my, you know, I didn't make enough money to help mom pay the bills and she got upset or, um, you know, I didn't meet my quota last night and my boyfriend got mad at me. Then, you know, it's right, trafficking. It's so, yeah. so it's not something that's just easily recognizable on yeah. the surface. It really takes knowing what the components of trafficking are and knowing what questions to ask and then how to act. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that with our listeners. Yeah, absolutely. I hope people out there keeping our eyes open, and if you see anything, contact Gabby and let yeah. us know, because I'm sure she would love to step in and help that person. Yeah. Um, anything that I didn't ask you about your organization that you wish you'd shared? Um, well, January, this is perfect timing. It's Human Trafficking Awareness Month. So if you're thinking about learning more, this is a great time to sign up for a training. You can do that on our website, growfreetn.org. Um, you can reach out to me personally, Gabby at ccaht.org. And that's Gabby, G-A-B-I. Um, yeah, just get educated, people. Know, know what to look for, know how to help. Um, you know, makes our jobs a little, a little bit easier when we have the community behind us, you right. know, doing that hard work. So, yeah. And I think too, like, I mean, I'm sure neighbors see stuff that doesn't look quite right, you know? And so Absolutely. like, if you're a neighbor and you're seeing something that doesn't look quite right, I mean, step up and say something. Yeah. Make a report to DCS. Report, yeah. It doesn't hurt to, to make that report. You know, if, if it's, Nothing, and they check it out, and there's nothing going on. Hey, no harm done. But if there's something going on there, then you know it's yeah. better that they you keep get that, that stuff anonymous. Anonymous as well, I'm sure. Absolutely. So yeah. Okay. Well, anything else you want to share? That's it. Thank All you. right. What are you excited about for this year? Oh gosh. It's goal setting time. It's, it's goal setting time. Like it's, it's a new year, 2023. Yes. What are we going to do this year, Gabby? I've got some fun trips planned. My husband and I are going to Ireland in March. Mm. Yes, for our five year anniversary. We just had some friends go there for their anniversary. So Very that's awesome. Excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, and summer months in Johnson City, you can't beat it. Oh, man. Sitting at the Ale House, having you a You can't brew. beat it today. It's 65 degrees. I know. It's just awesome. And yeah. then the other day, it was negative 65. Yeah. <laughs> so we get a whole mix of it, yeah. which is good, which is good. Well, I really enjoyed getting to meet you. I think you do a wonderful work. You'll be in my prayers and every what you're, with what you're doing because it's just um, – 
seems like something that's so needed and so sad and it just breaks my heart. So I hope that we can somehow end that and yeah. hopefully Jesus will just come back soon and take it all away. But yeah, mm-hmm. until then, we'll just keep fighting the fight. Yeah. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. And then uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, I enjoyed our conversation with Gabby. I hope you guys did too. Um, until next time, I'm Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you want to make a move to Johnson City, if um, we would love to help you out. We've got a great team in place. We also love to help people build wealth with real estate through buying investment properties and through property management as well. So you don't have to do a thing. We'll just find you a place and we'll rent it out and help you make money. So we'd love to help you. And um, check into our show notes as well. We'd love for you to connect with Gabby and support um, her organization as well. So thanks and have a great day.